participants are still joining sir you may start soon in a minute so your mic is off Sir, you may start now, please. Ah. Uh, let's wait because this is an important part. No wonder if anybody is missing. You able to see my screen? It is blank, sir. Blank. Yeah, it is initiating. Now the screen is there. No, sir, it's still blank. visible sir okay so this is exercise we'll start with the balance and uh, training we can see that what is the exercise is given for the balance i am pravas ranjan physiotherapist will be demonstrating you balance exercises for the front edge as parkinson's disease patient face problem in balance and these exercises are very much helpful in balance retraining which may help the subject of parkinson's disease to balance themselves and have a better coordination and prevent from fall this is the first exercise in standing position on this we can keep a chair Nearby also, when the balance is not proper, so we need a chair or can do it without the chair also. The first thing is that standing upright with the feet apart and the face facing forward. Stand in this position for 30 seconds, and then again we can make our feet close and stand upright for 30 seconds. If we face difficulty in doing this exercise, we can take the help of a chair. We can stand with the feet apart for the 30 seconds, and then with the help of the chair, support of the chair, we can bring our feet together, and then again stand for 30 seconds and try to wean off the support of chair slowly and gradually. This exercise is with making the pitch forward for the balance. And this should be kept in such a manner that the toe of one leg should be touching the heel of other leg. As we can see, this like this, and we can stand for 30 seconds. Then again back. Then again the left leg should be in front of the right leg, touching the toe of the right leg with the heel of left leg. If we face problem in doing it independently, then we can take the support or any bar, bar, metal bar, to be there, and we can handle 
part also we can take the support. Let the chair put the hand on the chair and then we can take forward our lift to the other lift. Then again holding for 30 seconds, then the next leg in front. First we should start with the support exercise and then slowly and gradually progress to the independent exercise. This can be performed in dynamic way also. For dynamic way, it is known as tandem walking. So we can put a bar and then we can put, suppose right leg we are taking into the front, it will be touching the two of the left leg, it will be touching the two of the left leg, and then again we will move forward. This is known as tandem walking. Without support also we can do this. Take the right leg in front of the left leg toe, the heel should be touching on the right leg, the toe, and then again in front. This we can repeat for both the right and left leg. Next is the single leg stand. I am showing first the modified way how we can do the single leg stand. We can put a stepper in front of our body, in front of the uh, body, and then we can put one leg on the step up for 30 seconds and then we can take down the right leg and we can put the other leg on the step up for 30 seconds. This is the modified way and this we can repeat for 10 repetitions. The other way of doing this exercise is single leg standing is without any uh, step up we can put the leg on the A in the air as much as it's possible. Minimum 30 seconds it should be kept with the right leg and as well as the left. Next is lateral balance. For this exercise we will be standing up right, both the legs apart and then we can take one the right leg as far as we can take and then support. Then we can come back to the starting position and again we can go as far as we can take the other leg and keep it on the ground and then we can come to the starting position. This we can hold it for 3 seconds and then come back to starting uh, position doing 10 repetitions for each leg. So next is the backward walking. Backward walking, modified as well as tiny. In modified backward walking, we can take one uh, our, our right foot backward for one step, first putting the heel down and then coming forward to the starting position. Then repeat it with the other leg. This can be repeated for the same level. This is the modified backward walking. And then we can do it a dynamic backward walking. We can backward walk. With the one leg, then we can repeat it with the other leg. Again, we can see this how the backward walking can be done. Backward walking with the other leg, then this may help you in getting the balance of the step. the forward step, you can take the one step uh, ahead of one leg, and the right leg I'm keeping. Then come to back to the starting position. Then same, we can repeat with the other leg, like the left leg, and then we can come to the starting position back. And this can be repeated ten times at a time. Next one is the quick step. Quick step helps us to balance when there is sudden shift in our uh, gait. Suppose we are doing it uh, for forward bending. When we are walking forward, then suddenly we formal up and then we have to perform. So this can be also practiced because in patients with Parkinson they are not able to take quick step. So how to take the quick step and develop this coordination? First, for the forward, we can see that we will shift our body weight forward and then suddenly we will take our one leg ahead. This we can repeat with the other leg also. Take the body weight forward as we feel to fall we will take it other leg also forward. So this quick step will help us in balancing 
might be are moving forward. Then the lateral to have the lateral quick step. So we will laterally shift the body weight, and as we will feel we are falling, then our subject to take the one leg apart from the other leg. So this hold for three seconds, and then come back to standing position, and again from the other side, and we are falling. We keep hold for three seconds, and again. On this starting position, this we can repeat for five times. Next is the dynamic balance exercise. In this dynamic balance exercise, we can make the patient to walk in the figure of eight structure. We can put two blocks in front, uh, make the subject walk in a figure of eight. Suppose he's walking, he can take these steps and make a figure of eight by coming. This can be repeated 10 times. Apart from these dynamic exercises, this figure of weight exercise, we can do more of the dynamic exercise to improve the coordination and the Cognition also. This one, the motor uh, uh, motor training for the uh, for part coordination, but for the cognitive also, we can ask the subject while walking, he can subtract uh, 5 plus 3, 5 minus 3, or he can add 5 plus 3 during walking because this will help him in cognition. More for motor, he can take any object, uh, he can even take the mobile phone, and while walking, he can do some activity in the Mobile phone. So this will also lead to the coordination and uh, coordination improvement in the subject. So this was the exercise for the uh, coordination and the balance. Apart from this, uh, we are doing the uh, conventional frankel uh, uh, exercises that can be practiced. Uh, we can do the frankel exercises and then. We can add up to this uh, some specific exercise. I have demonstrated the some specific exercise, and I am going to demonstrate some more specific exercise for the strength and duration. So what we are doing as per the uh, our conventional, thing, we can go for that, and some specific exercise can be added. I am here to explain about some of the strengthening exercises for the practice because it has been observed that uh, as time goes on to grow older, the muscle strength grows down. Especially in the cases where there is some disease, and it has been observed that it is much weaker than the people of similar age know in other people. The Parkinson's also is uh, happens and the uh, uh, subject who is suffering from Parkinson's are having a weaker uh, muscle in comparison to the other individual, individual who are not having the neurological disorder. So uh, we can go for the training program for that. Some points has to be taken care of. One is that there should be a suitable environment for that. We have to make sure that the Proper support is there so that one should not fall. Symptoms should be well within the control. Um, suppose if is, the subject is having all these, then he will be able to do the exercises properly. But as soon as he goes into the off phase, then he will have some. Exercise should be done three times a week. Take a rest in between. A day, one day you do the exercises, the other day you take a rest so that the muscles doesn't become so much weak. Then one thing or more is important that the exercises should be done at any individual of Parkinson's that the pace should not be much higher or much lower, whatever pace is. At that place, only the exercises should be done. So, now I will demonstrate what are the simple exercises for the strengthening of the muscle. So, 
take a chair. The chair should be firm on the ground and make sure that it doesn't slip while taking up. Initially, try to have the chair with the arm raised so that the subject who is suffering uh, uh, from artistic can take the support of by lateral arm rest in order to get up. This exercise should be performed 10 times at a time and you can make a set of 10 repetitions. 10 set, take rest, 10 set. So we can do it this way. Take the support of the arm and take the support of the arm and the subject later. And then again we can place it back and then sit down. Like this, he has to perform 10 repetitions and slowly and gradually at the time what comes as he is feeling confident the subject. Then he can stand up without armless, help of the armless, and then sit without taking the help of the armless. In this, we can adjust the height of the chair. Then we can start from the comfort level of the subject. If we have to make the height of the chair higher or is comfortable in order to perform the simple stand exercise, then keep the level of the chair higher, slowly and gradually we can lower the level of the chair in order to build the muscles of the work. This may help in developing balance of the body. So for that, take the support of the chair, chair firm on the ground, it should not flip, stand up for right, look in front, take the support of the chair, and then Go on your feet and then slowly step down. We do it for the ten repetitions, then down, ten repetitions, then down, and then take a rest, again ten repetitions, then take a rest, and again ten repetitions. This will help in developing the muscles of the calf as well as also help in getting the balance movement. Standing and that is lateral step up. So keep one of your legs or step up and then with the help of your muscle power, the body weight, you sit up, hold, and then come down. Hold, come down. This also can repetitions, wait for some time, then repetitions, take rest, then ten If you are not able to do this, as there are some stages, the Parkinson stage one, stage two, stage three, stage two or three, and maybe some support. So keep a chair by your side, or you can take the support of the board, stand against the board laterally, and then put the one leg on the step, and then with the help of the support, you can do this movement. This will help me. Meaning the strength of your quadriceps muscle as well as your calf muscles as well as your frontal front foot muscles. So this will help you in gaining balance also. The side is sliding down, or you can say the half square. Take the support of the wall, put the leg a little bit front, and then the uh, help of the of your body, which is upright. And it's uh, touching the wall, just slide down, and it should be as such that it should not cross over your toe, greater toe. It should be near the toe or about at the parallel to the toe, it should not be in front of the toe. So get down, then up. If any problem in doing independently, you can take support of the wall, stand like this in the wall, and then. Go up and then go down and go up and go down. This also, 10 repetitions, take rest, and 10 repetitions, take rest, then perhaps the middle of the pyramid is squeezed. Make sure that it is not squeezed. 
you sit back upright, back, back. This can be done for both the legs. Side one, ten repetitions. Press, ten repetitions. Take press, and repetitions. So when you go to the band, there are several types of band. This is the moderate one. Uh, we can start with the low resistance band also. The red one, the red one is the low resistance, and the yellow one is one of the very low resistance. This yellow one is starting with the low, low resistance. Then uh, heavy resistance is the blue, and the black one, that one I'm not having, but blue and having the blue and black one. As per the requirement of the subject, we can introduce the band therabands. And this theraband exercise is very good in extending. And especially in the subject of who are in stage two or stage three of the participant series, it can be helpful. Stage one, it is very much helpful. So we can try these therapeutic exercises also. But please take care that this patient is stable. The object which we are using is stable. There is no chance of falling, and the environment should be very much cordial for the subject. Apart from standing, we can go, go for stretching also. And stretching of the uh, trunk is very important because this becomes stiff and also it's too and this uh, restricts the movement. So we can do the stretching. Our simple stretching exercise is there. You can see, uh, lie on the mat. Should lie on the mat. Let's hold the knee. We have to bend both the knees. And when we are rotating, Lower limb towards the left side, our neck should go towards the right side. Okay, if it is going to the right side, they should go to the left side. This way we can other way we can put the hand underneath the head. We can step, we can do that, this will stretch the pectorals as well, and then we can stretch the body, the lower leg, and then we can take the head to the opposite side. We can take the leg to the right side, then the head should go to the left side, and we should make sure that our scapula as well as the elbow is not lifting up and it is stick to the ground as much as it is possible. There are many other exercises. These are the simple exercises which can be performed. Uh, so, there are other exercises also there. So, we can uh, move with those exercises also, but these are some specific exercises which can practice to improve the mobility, flexibility, and the strength of the uh, Parkinson's disease patient. So, uh, now we come to the second part. Second part is the artificial intelligence. As we all know, that we are in an age of uh, uh, technology and uh, now also we are connected to in this pandemic with through the technology only and the technology is growing day by day now we have the mobile earlier the phones where uh, nine nine phone now we are having a mobile phone and mobile phone is also one of the uh, artificial intelligence device device because it perceives the data when you uh, google you are using Google Voice and all that, it is perceiving the data, your phone is uh, uh, rotating, uh, when you are uh, trying to read any data, then it will rotate, so these are the things which uh, are artificial intelligence, as for the definition, artificial intelligence as a study is an intelligent agent, any device that perceives its environment and takes action that it maximizes into the chance of successfully achieving the goal. A more elaborate definition is characterized the AI as system ability to correctly interpret the external data to learn from such data and to use those learning to achieve a specific goal and task to flexible adaptation. So external data is being interpreted by the software and then accordingly the flexibility is Hello. Yes. Hello. Finally, mute yourself. So uh, how it has helped, uh, it has helped uh, with the researcher assessing with the, all the tools like uh, improving gait and balance, uh, improving the uh, functional outcome by UPDRS scale assessment, pre and post, uh, 
functional gait assessment, Berg's balance test, time up and go test, time up and go test is a, a one minute, a one meter walk from the chair. When you are getting up from the chair, go, go complete one meter and then come back and sit on the chair. It takes hardly 10 to 12 minutes, 12 seconds. And then if it is taking long time, a longer duration, uh, the how much time he has taken, it is noted down pre and post, and then it has been decided that whether it's helping or not. So when we are, I will show you a video. Uh, this is uh, of a walk gating pattern. So one harness is there. The subject will be harnessed because uh, he may have some. Uh, uh, he, he, he may have a problem in uh, coordination. Then uh, second is the uh, uh, that rear projection is there as he will be is feeling that he is walking on the natural surface and then. Here three is the camera, a lot of cameras are there. So this camera will help him to get the interpretation, external interpretation. So he can, it acts as a sensor also. And then four, four is the harness. And one is the treadmill on the treadmill, which will be walking. So I'll show you the video and this will give you some better idea. And how this lady is walking with the help of virtual reality and artificial intelligence. In the, in the beginning, she is doing the simple task with harness, and then later on, dual task Sandy and without Williams harness. Also, she is ready to walk. for action. It looks and feels like she's part of a video game, but it's actually high tech rehab for her Parkinson's disease. We now in neurorehabilitation have to challenge patients for them to get better, and so this provides a very safe environment. For that to occur. The virtual reality treadmill has two mounts, one for each foot, and a base that moves to mimic different surfaces. It can also react and adjust to a patient's movement. And a wraparound video screen completely immerses the patient into a real life scenario. You want to go over like a little hill, you feel it in the machine. Rather than just having the patient walk or an individual walk up and down uh, you know, a standard biomechanical track, now what we can do is we can change the uh, environment in a very organic fashion. Special programs are designed to work on specific skill sets while providing positive feedback. During weekly appointments at Cleveland Clinic, Sandy works with her therapist on gait and increasing stride length by touching her toe to a box. Other times, she's asked to target birds and butterflies while walking. Now by targeting this to balance, to and it satisfies that competitive spirit. I enjoy being so this is the birds and butterflies. Not that I enjoy the killing part, but I do enjoy the challenges. Can I get them? I know once I slow down, it becomes slow. I couldn't move. So I'm willing to do now what I can without to keep myself going. Uh, Excellent. I'm in performance. So this is the way how the artificial intelligence and virtual reality together work uh, for, with the help. And uh, the, uh, this uh, is based on the thing one is use it or lose it. And we all know that neuroplasticity of the brain helps in reshaping the things and everything. And here also in Parkinson's also it helps, though it is a progressive disease, but the brain uh, re re reshapes itself and uh, at least delay the progression uh, of the, in the Parkinson's disease. And the progression is the therapy that is that the progression is delayed for longer time of the period also. So here I will show one other video that how this works with the sensor. There are accelerometer, gyrometer, manometer. These things together do combine with the sensors. There wire sensor, wireless sensor. Both sensors are there and how they uh, help in getting a better outcome in the uh, functional outcome of the participation. Parkinson's disease patients, exercise eases Mary Sletter's tremors, halted gait, and lack of balance. She recently took part in a UCSF study to see if special video games could replace her regular exercises. So, you know, the therapeutic games are the result of a marriage between game developers and scientific researchers. Well, UCSF had developed a series of exercise programs for patients with Parkinson's. And they asked us if we could actually make a video of it. And we said, you know, there's this new thing called the Wii. Why are we making interactive games? UCSF 
UCSF researchers thought video games might be a welcome change of pace from physical therapy, which can be tedious. People very much like doing the games. They found them engaging, fun, and therapeutic. But developing games that would know if patients were using the right muscles in the right way was tricky. Health games need to detect a player's movements much more precisely than their consumer counterparts. So there's three different devices that you need to be able to sense where you are in a particular space. One is an accelerometer. Am I moving a particular direction? Another one is a gyroscope, which is which direction am I pointing? And then third, you need something like it to say, okay, I need a rock solid north. That's a magnetometer. These three technologies enable smart devices to do this. To make the technology more accurate, the developers created suits with nine built-in sensors. They were a, a big pain. The battery-operated suits were awkward and cumbersome, so the developers turned to camera technology. It's bathing you in infrared light, and then taking that information and using some very clever software to say, ah, you just raised your hand. The camera technology does not need to be worn, but it's not as accurate as the sensors. Each one has their pluses and minuses, and we're looking at actually trying to perform a fusion between those two technologies. The UCSF study showed that despite their physical limitations, Parkinson's patients could successfully play the games at home, and they did them more often because they enjoyed them and they helped. It was a fun way and an easy way to exercise and write my own front room at any time. I felt better. I felt more, more normal, more fluid, looser. In fact, the study found that after playing the games for 12 weeks, 65% of patients had longer strides, 55% had increased gait velocity, and 55% also reported improved balance. The hope is that if we can engage people in physical activity early in the disease course, that we might actually be able to delay progression. Yeah. Um, the therapeutic games could be available to the public as early as next fall. For Smart Planet, I'm Simi Das. So this you have seen this that how the things were working and how she has improved her functional outcome after going through this artificial intelligence with the help of virtual reality. So the things will be coming up now, this uh, telehealth, telemedicine, these things are coming, e-health will be coming, cloud computing is there that uh, you can uh, save the data at any, 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 device, any of the device you can save and you can open in other device so it will make it easier not to carry too much of uh, data the time will come that electromyography and electrocardiograms will be done with the smart watches and uh, uh, nowadays uh, measuring of tremors and all that uh, has come into the practice uh, so this uh, is one of the device which measures the tremor in a minute and uh, accordingly we can plan out the uh, treatment and uh, for the uh, pre and post treatment their accuracy will be there the research will improve with this this helps in uh, initiation of the gait uh, or what cadence or what uh, stride length he has taken in what minutes, what seconds. So this will help us more in research and we will have a more accurate research for better functional outcome, for better planning of the treatment and uh, definitely to improve the good quality of life in the subject of Parkinson's disease. So in, in the coming years, the advancement of technology, the measuring of Parkinson and rehabilitation will go significantly for the better outcome and building out the active quality of life. Thank you very much for the patience hearing. I hope that this lecture would have enlightened you something about the topic. Yes. Thank you so much, sir. It was a great, fruitful learning session on Parkinson. We are grateful to have you and your valuable time. Any questions? Any queries there? Then I can ask. How much time is left? Any question from any of the participants? No, ma'am. Okay, thank you. So we will end the meeting now. We will end. All right, sir.
sir thank you so much for this session thank you thank you dr swati for the nice coordination of this uh, uh, program and uh, jagannath is also here i want to ask a question uh, sir yes. do we have uh, this virtual rehabilitation do we practicing this in india also like uh, the video Most you have probably the, the advancement will come and uh, in india also i think next decade uh, uh, will be uh, see change in the uh, health sector because uh, this pandemic has taught us a lot of things so i think uh, next decade tele rehab tele medicine uh, tele physiotherapy will uh, become a reality and it may be coming in india soon okay thank you so much sir okay no other questions as such sir everyone is saying thank you so much and happy physiotherapy day to all yes happy world physiotherapy day to all of you and uh, i wish uh, grand success to all of you we should achieve your uh, goals whatever you have decided in the field of physiotherapy so the dr jagannath and dr anup is not here dr anup sir so there is a question by dr ha there is a question by dr srijita choudhury uh, sir can we make a parkinson's patient walk on treadmill yes definitely as uh, you have seen that uh, with the harness it was uh, in that video she was walking with the harness on the treadmill and as the uh, he she will progress or she will develop the balance and coordination without harness also you can uh make her uh, him uh, a question by dr anam fatima can artificial intelligence help in stroke rehabilitation so coming up in stroke rehabilitation also artificial intelligence will come we have telephysiotherapy will be a comprehensive one it is not for uh, Uh, treatment, a single disease treatment, but it will be a comprehensive one. So this treadmill can be what I have shown. It can be shown in the patient also. It can be used in this patient also to in order to improve the gait and all. Uh, next question from Doctor Vishnuvi Bhatt. How much percentage is the success rate of artificial intelligence? See, uh, I have shown the video. Then they have said that sixty-five percent of the The stride length improved, 55% of the coordination and the balance improved. So those studies are suggesting that there are at least some significant changes in the uh, function outcome. Any other question? I will now end up because since morning, uh, since one o'clock, I am busy with webinars and everything. So <laughs> now. It's ten o'clock. All right, sir. Yes. So, so thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor Namne. So I will leave. Thank you. Now. Yeah. Thank you, sir. You. Thank you, sir. All right, sir. Thank you, Doctor Swati. Thank you so much, Doctor Namne, Krishna, sir. and nirupama health research charitable trust for giving me this opportunity to moderate this webinar and uh, all the participants are informed here that certificates will be sent to them within 48 hours thank you so much everyone stay safe stay healthy good night